Although my review of the Pixio PX325C 32-inch 1080p gaming monitor was overwhelmingly positive, there was one problem that was kind of hard to overlook for some people. It was simply too much screen real estate for that resolution, and any time I wasn't in-game, it showed. With a curved 144Hz FreeSync panel, gaming on the 325C was a joy, but anything done in the desktop environment was hindered by a distinct lack of sharpness. When the PX347C Prime arrived at the office a little while ago, I was pretty excited. Could Pixio carry over what made their 16x9 monitor such a great value while also bumping up the resolution? Let's find out. Four inch ultrawides have really come into vogue over the past year or two, with more and more companies introducing gaming products at this aspect ratio and size. While some retain the same 1080 vertical pixels, the more premium products look to capitalize on all the screen real estate by going with a 3440 by 1440 configuration. Unfortunately, this involves a relatively costly manufacturing process, and the prices of these large, often curved panels remains out of the reach for the majority of consumers. Pixio is aiming to change that, as although the price of the PX347C Prime is anything but cheap at $600 US, it is a full $200 or so below the price of comparable products featuring FreeSync, and $400 plus less than any similar G-Sync monitors. This all kind of fits with the Pixio company philosophy of high performance gaming monitors at competitive prices. It's interesting to see what kind of trade-offs in design companies choose to make when targeting the low end of a market, even when that low end is still objectively fairly expensive. To find out, I spent a full month with the PX347C Prime on my desk as my primary gaming, editing, and everyday monitor. And as I only use a single display setup, that means that I got to know it really well. Now, if you happen to be coming from a 16x9 monitor, no matter the size, the first thing that strikes you about this curved ultra-wide experience is how surprisingly immersive it can be. Because of the distance a monitor is from your eyeballs, a curved monitor is nothing like a curved TV, which kind of have gone virtually extinct after being the biggest gimmick in entertainment since 3D TVs. Curved TVs do almost nothing to add to a movie watching experience at a distance of 10 feet or so, but a screen that wraps around your field of view and is right in front of you changes the way you consume content, can aid in productivity, and expands fields of view in games. It's actually great, and I hope we see this form factor continue to evolve. The 347C uses a 1440p Samsung SVA panel with an 1800R curve. This is the same technology used in the 325C, and it remains one of the strong points of this monitor. It may still not be able to compete with IPS technology as far as color accuracy, but for everybody except those who do professional photo or video editing, the SVA panel looks great. I will say that I did need to make several adjustments upon first hooking it up, as it appears the factory calibration is more akin to something like a demo mode, where all of the colors are super saturated and the brightness is cranked up. After performing my standard display calibration, I was very happy with the results. Black levels were deep and colors popped with nice, accurate contrast. I also didn't notice any backlight bleed from the edges or the corners, which is something budget panels tend to struggle with. When side by side with my Dell IPS Ultrawide, there are some noticeable differences in color reproduction. Specifically, I didn't quite feel as confident doing color correction while editing my videos. Now, that's not to say that editing was a problem, far from it actually. All the videos you've seen on my channel over the past month have been edited on this display right here, and it was certainly up to the task. If I had to choose one, however, specifically for that application, I still think that I'd go with an IPS panel for now. The design of the housing is classic and understated. The bezels are constructed of a matte finished black plastic, and there is a small unobtrusive Pixio logo on the bottom left corner. While this is far from a designer, bezel-less product, the lines are clean and the overall appearance is pleasing. 
The monitor is about a half an inch thick at the sides, but does bow out towards the middle of the backside to accommodate the video inputs, power supply, and internal circuitry. Around back, you'll see the same matte black finish on the plastic, along with a red Pixio logo. There are three video inputs, but if you want to take advantage of the high refresh rate and free sync, you'll need to use DisplayPort. There are no audio or USB pass-throughs back here, but those are features usually reserved for high-end monitors anyway. Back here, we also find the biggest and most glaring weakness of the 347C Prime, the stand. Now, maybe I'm making too big of an issue about this, but the fact remains that even though this is a budget 34-inch ultra-wide when compared to similar products, it's still a $600 monitor. And for that price, I want either a stand that does all kinds of gymnastics or the ability to mount the monitor on a VESA arm. The 347C has neither of these things. The stand is certainly sturdy, but it does basically nothing when it comes to movement. It has a little bit of tilt action, but does not pivot, rotate, or have height adjustment. This actually made it difficult to use at first because where I traditionally have my monitor positioned on my desk means that a screen at this height is just too tall and I was stuck looking up all the time. I could basically instantly forgive Pixio for this had they simply drilled four tiny holes in the housing and allowed users to mount it. In fact, Pixio themselves makes a really great VESA monitor stand that I talked about in my 325C video. It does all the things you need a stand to do, like go up and down. And it kind of blows my mind that Pixio didn't think to include this functionality in their flagship product. With all that out of the way though, the focus of the 347C Prime is gaming. The 3440 by 1440 panel has a 100 hertz refresh rate and free sync, two very desirable characteristics. It also has a few menu accessible features like presets for FPS gaming or RTS gaming, picture in picture or picture by picture, which actually allows for two different inputs to be displayed simultaneously. Now, speaking of the menu system, just try to stay out of it if you can. It's not great and it's kind of hard to see what is currently selected. The menu options are grayish blue and the selected item is like a slightly darker grayish blue. It reminds me of Archer and his tactile neck. Some are black and some are slightly darker black. Yeah, I know it's sexy, Woodhouse. That's why I bought 10. Now arrange those by color. These are all black. Oh, are they? <sighs> or are five in a dark black and five in a slightly darker black? FreeSync Gaming here worked as you'd expect it to, with my Vega 64 allowing for a buttery smooth experience. No tearing and no skipped frames. What I also found to be exceptional though was gaming with my NVIDIA 1080 Ti. Because FreeSync only works with AMD graphics cards, I was a little skeptical, but the high refresh rate made for a similarly great time without the distracting tearing I was used to with my Dell Ultrawide. The 8 millisecond response time is the biggest gaming weakness here, although as an admitted filthy casual, I didn't even notice it at all. In fact, the only reason I'm reporting on it is because it's in the spec sheet and I know some people care, but it didn't affect my gaming one bit. This is overall an A plus gaming experience. I did try to overclock the monitor past 100 Hertz, but failed to even get it to 105. So I don't think that that's something worth hoping for here. Similar to the gaming experience, watching movies or YouTube videos was also a strong point, especially if you could search up some 21 by nine content. The 347C has a 178 degree viewing angle, although similar to the 325C, the outer bounds of that range tends to get pretty washed out. Again though, this is not a problem for computer monitors because how often will you be positioned that far off axis? And it's not like the stand can pivot at all anyway. The monitor's 1440p resolution also made doing everyday tasks like web browsing and word processing much more pleasant than with the 325C. The screen looks sharper and cleaner, and the pixels aren't as glaringly obvious. The Pixio PX347C Prime is overall a really great value for the money, especially when compared to other products in its category. However, it is so, so hard for me to recommend it, and it has nothing to do with gaming performance, which is the focus of this monitor. It has everything to do with this stupid stand. Why make a monitor that does so many things so well and kneecap it with literally the easiest part of a monitor to get right? 
Just let me mount the thing and we can be friends again. With that being said though, if you're just looking to get your PUBG on, the 347C is one of the best choices out there, especially if you're rocking a Team Red GPU. So what do you guys think of the Pixio PX347C Prime? Does the stand bother you as much as it does me or do you just want a comparatively cheap 34 inch gaming monitor? Let me know down below in the comments. Also don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already and check out my merchandise store at the link down below if you want to support what I do here. As always guys, thanks for watching.